everybody and welcome back to my channel. Dr. Daniela Fisher here bringing you episode two of answering your COVID-19 questions. Last week we talked about masks. Should we mask? Should we not mask? And I also answered the question, do masks cause hypoxia to the brain or hypercarbia to the brain? If you missed that video, I'm going to link it in the cards above. Be sure that you check it out. This week, I am going to be addressing COVID-19 antibody tests. Should we all be running out to get these tests? I'm also going to be addressing a great question that you guys asked me, which is, why don't we all just throw COVID-19 parties like we threw chicken pox parties back in the 1980s, all get infected, all get immune, and move on with our lives? But before I answer those questions, I have a little message from my little sponsor. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on all your notifications, and it's free. So, my mom is the best. Thank you. My biggest goal in today's video is to give you guys the facts so that if you decide to have a COVID-19 antibody test, you know what the limitations of the test are and you know what information you're actually getting. But before we start talking about the antibody tests, I just wanna make sure that everybody understands the difference between the antibody testing and the nasal swabs that we've been seeing in the news. The nasal swabs that we've been seeing in the news are actually not nasal swabs. They're swabs that go into the nasopharynx. So they go all the way into the back of the throat and we swab the back of the throat to see if we pick up any viral RNA particles. And then we send those swabs, PCR testing is done on them, and the PCR test reveals if a viral RNA was detected. If it is, it means that we are acutely infected, meaning we have COVID-19 now. Antibody tests, on the other hand, detect our body's response to the COVID-19 virus by generating two different types of antibodies. IgM, which is generated several days to weeks after you're infected with COVID-19, and IgG, which is generated several weeks to months after you are infected with COVID-19. But the thing about these antibody tests is that they're really not a very reliable test for detecting acute disease, because many times, as I said, it takes days to weeks to generate those IgM and IgG antibodies. So if you're looking to see if you have acute disease, if you're looking to see if you have COVID-19 now, the best test for you is not an antibody test, it's actually that throat swab. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the antibody tests. So many companies are manufacturing these antibody tests because everybody wants to make a buck. The problem is most of these tests have not been FDA approved and the ones that have been FDA approved have been rushed through the FDA and have not undergone the rigorous testing that most of these tests have to undergo before we send them to market. One of the biggest problems that we're seeing with these COVID-19 tests is a high false positive rate. And all that means is that you might go get an antibody test and if you get a result that you are positive, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've actually had COVID-19. One of the reasons for this is because sometimes these antibody tests will detect non-COVID-19 coronavirus antibodies that you might have generated from a common cold. Another reason we have a really high false positive rate is because very few people in our population have actually been infected by COVID-19. And the fewer the number of people infected by COVID-19 in a population, the higher the false positive rate and the greater the number of people infected in a population by COVID-19, the lower the false positive rate. I see your eyes glazing over. Stick with me. The point that I want to make is that this test has a high false positive rate. There are lots of times when people get positive tests, but they actually haven't had the disease. But let's say that you have had the disease and you have a true positive test and you actually do have antibodies to COVID-19. We still don't know if having those antibodies protects you from getting COVID-19 a second time because we don't know how many antibodies it takes to confer resistance to getting COVID-19 a second time. And we don't know how long these antibodies last. Do they last a day, a week, a month, a year? Scientists believe that if COVID-19 behaves like other coronaviruses that we studied for a longer period of time, antibodies are probably not gonna last for very long, several months to maybe a year or two. But scientists don't believe that COVID-19 antibodies are gonna last a lifetime. Another way to explain the point that I was just making was we've all had the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, and rubella. And let's say that your doctor wanted to know how many measles antibodies you have. Your doctor would send you to a lab, the lab would draw your blood and would send the results back to your doctor about how many measles antibodies you have. 
Because we've been studying measles for so many years, we've established a reference range, and we know that if your antibodies fall within that reference range, you are immune to measles. If your antibodies fall below that reference range, we know that you need a measles booster. COVID-19 is so new that we haven't even had a chance to establish a reference range for how many antibodies it's gonna take to give us immunity from getting infected again. The big takeaway point here is that COVID-19 antibody tests have a really high false positive rate. And number two, just because you have COVID-19 antibodies doesn't mean that you're protected from getting the virus again. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, is there any redeeming quality about these antibody tests? Is there any purpose for even having developed them? And the answer is yes, because these tests do allow scientists and doctors and epidemiologists over time to look at how many people have been infected by COVID-19. And they also allow doctors and epidemiologists to study the immune system's response to COVID-19 over time. So we can get serial tests over weeks and months and years, and that will give us a lot of data about how our immune system has responded to the COVID-19 virus. Another way that the antibody tests are useful is that if somebody has been infected with COVID-19 and has fully recovered, we can use these antibody tests to determine if that person is a good candidate to donate their serum, which contains antibodies, to a person that might be in the ICU and very sick and possibly dying. So the bottom line is that these tests are useful, but they're really useful when we look at the data that we gather from the tests over time. Now that we have discussed antibody testing, let's address the question, why don't we all just go out and get COVID-19, throw COVID-19 parties like we threw chicken pox parties back in the 80s, get it over with, and we can all move on with our lives? Well, the first reason is because we know relatively little about this virus still. <clears throat> just two months ago, we didn't even know that young, healthy people were getting strokes from COVID-19. Two months ago, we also thought that kids weren't getting COVID-19, but what we know now is that kids are suffering from COVID-19 because we've seen a handful of kids with a Kawasaki-like syndrome, which just means that the vessels that supply the heart are getting inflamed, and that can lead to heart attacks in children. We also know that kids are suffering from toxic shock syndrome, which just means that kids' organ systems are shutting down when they're infected with COVID-19. So it would be really irresponsible for any doctor to recommend that people just go get infected by a disease that we know so little about. In addition to that, the risks that come with COVID-19 are so much greater than the risks that come with something like the chicken pox. Young people and old people alike are ending up in the ICUs, on ventilators, many people are on ECMO, and the death rate for COVID-19 is so much higher than that of the chicken pox. Finally, we don't wanna encourage people to just go get COVID-19 to get it over with, because as I mentioned in the antibody portion of this video, we really don't even know what our immune system's response is to COVID-19 yet, so we can't guarantee that getting sick is gonna actually confer long-term immunity. And finally, we don't wanna overwhelm our hospital systems. We saw what happened in Italy, we saw what happened in New York. If too many people get COVID-19 at once, we're gonna run out of hospital beds, we're gonna run out of ICU beds, we're gonna run out of ventilators, and we won't even be able to take care of the people that have COVID-19. In addition, we won't be able to take care of people that come to the hospital that don't have COVID-19 if the hospitals are overwhelmed. People that come in with strokes or heart attacks or who have been in motor vehicle accidents won't have good care because the hospital will be overrun with COVID-19 patients. So the big point that I'm trying to make here is we just don't know enough about this virus yet to recommend that people go out and get it in order to attain immunity to the virus. Finally, and before the end of the video, and please stick around because I wanna make two really, really important points about mask wearing. I got two questions in my comments from last week's video that I wanted to address here very loud and clear. The first one was, if I'm uncomfortable wearing my mask over my nose and mouth, can I just wear it over my mouth? The answer, you guys, is a definitive no. You have to wear the mask over your nose and your mouth. Otherwise, it's like wearing a condom without a tip. You're just not protected if you wear the mask only over your mouth. The other question that I got that really concerned me was that somebody said they can't get their baby to wear a mask. You guys, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children under two do not wear masks. So kids under two get a free pass. Do not mask kids under two because of the risk of suffocation. Only mask kids that are two and above. So you guys, that wraps up this video. 
I hope that you guys come away from this video armed with the shortcomings of the COVID-19 antibody tests. You understand why we don't wanna recommend that people just go out and get infected and don't worry about it. And as always, I will link some articles below if you care to read anything more about this. If you are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. That will help it be seen in this fancy YouTube algorithm. And make sure that you guys follow me on Instagram at Dr. Danny Fisher. I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.